Greetings comrades, and now I shall show you my Cold War Gone Hot Soviets. Glory to the people, we shall bring communism to the world. Well, I don't know, you could classify this one as kind of a topical one. The Russians, and the Russians are doing stuff in the world. Anyway, that's real world politics and yeah, I'm not interested in that one. I'm more interested in this nonsense. Okay. So where do we begin? Well, uh, let's, I'm going to be a bit different and start here with that most favorite thing of anything, tanks. This is my uh, T-80 battalion, uh, again, designed for Cold War Commander. So the standard for that game is that every, a stand represents a platoon's worth or a troop's worth of, of either vehicles or infantry. So you're generally running uh, battalions and brigades rather than uh, uh, individual tanks and sections of infantry. However, you can play it as a stand represents a team of infantry and a vehicle represents just itself. So in this case, we have either a T-80 battalion or a T-80 company. The vehicle on the rounded base is the command vehicle. And then we have a number of... These ones, I believe, are... If I can remember correctly, they are my... These ones at the back are the GHQ models. Of T80. Unfortunately, the five in the rear, I've lost. I don't have their Dushka mounts, but this one, this one I did. And then the other three in the lead are equipped with the mine clearing devices on their on their no, on their noses. Moving across, we have one of my my uh, main command stand, divisional or brigade, depending on how you want to run it. Uh, we do have a. Oh, we do actually have a vehicle underneath the camouflage netting. A group of infantry, soldiers and stuff moving around. And in the back, we have some signalers. Here is my two hind gunships. I haven't actually drilled them. I keep remembering and then forgetting about drilling the, the underneath so that I can mount them onto little bases. For a Cold War Commander, you technically don't need Hind gunships or aircraft or anything like that. You don't need helicopters. You don't need these things as they make their attack and then they fl and then they disappear off the table again. So again, requiring them is more of a like an artillery strike or something like that. However, it's always nice to have the models themselves and you can just drop them down and yeah, as soon as they're done, they come away. Next up is my flogger. Again, I haven't drilled the underneath. I do need to remember to do that. Uh, both of these, if I remember right, I think the flogger is a GHQ. And possibly the hand gunships are as well. If not, they're H and R. I'll have to remember about this one. So moving across to the first of our units, we have my BMP command. We have a command variant hiding under the cam netting, and a recovery vehicle moving past. Then we have the recce group, uh, BMP BMP two with a BRDM two. Anti aircraft group which is the Shilka and a, hang on, panics, quick, quick, what are you? SA9 slash 13, basically uh, gun, gun, gun and missile. Moving across, we have our artillery OP with his BRDM1 and the anti-tank group marked armed with BRDM3. Double checks, yeah. Free BRDM3, so that's what it's supposed to have. This, uh, everything here is designed around the WRG orders of battle converted for Cold War Commander, which can be get off, which you can get off the Cold War Commander, Blitzkrieg Commander, Future War Commander website. So each battalion group has a, so each battalion has a command stand. In this case, as a BMP group, they have a B, here we have another BMP2, some figures, and then the infantry teams with their transports. BMP battalions are organised around nine BMPs in total. It says that, and then he double checks his paperwork. Hang on, no, ten BMPs. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we've got nine. That's not right. HQ, ten BMPs, six infantry, and when I say seven. Have I messed, have I messed this up? Give me a moment. Right, anyway. Uh, uh, <coughs> right. I can't count. So, uh, yeah, the list says 10 BMPs in total, and I had, um, uh, didn't have enough. Anyway, so I did, I was actually wondering why I had 
six extras. And I was like, oh yeah, cool, that's fine. I was like, rrr, 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 okay, I just can't count. So, as I was saying, so, Battalion Commander of a BMP1, uh, BMP2, then we have nine, so eight BMPs, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine BMPs, each with a stand of infantry to represent the three rifle companies, motor rifle companies. And in support, you have the support groups, which is two 120mm mortars, with their tow vehicles, in this case lorries, and a BMP2 with a SA-17. This is then repeated with all three battalions of the, hang on, with all three battalions, so command variant, and then nine BMPs with their infantry stands, two mortars, and a anti-aircraft team. Like I said I have three battalions of this and then to finish off the regiment, the motor rifle regiment we have a tank battalion which includes the T-64 command and then nine T-64s because I'm not a fan of the T-72. I like to be different. Now that's the following the orbit so that is a complete as he picks up his book so that is a complete, what we have here is essentially a complete BMP regiment, also a motor rifle BMP regiment, uh, and in all, more or less all of its glory. Now on the other side you may have noticed that we have something else. Not completely different, but slightly different vehicles, slightly different more stands, and actually correctly, not correctly worked out this time. So here on the other side we have our BTR regiment, so a motor rifle BTR. Vo uh, vehicle lorry, uh, command lorry with command variant BTR 80, reconnaissance group of BMP 2 with BRDM 2, anti aircraft group, and the tank hunter group or the tank destroyer group. Then we have 1st Battalion command with eight BTR 60s with two stands of infantry to each one. A support group with two 120mm mortars, the SA-17 with their BTR-80, and two, let me just make sure I get this correct, it is the Spigot, and a pair of Spigot teams with their BTR-80. I was wrong, sorry, I was sorry, it is eight BTRs, but it's six for the infantry, and then two for the support, two as part of the support groups. This is then repeated with the 2nd Battalion, Command, eight in total with six rifle groups, support groups of uh, anti-air and anti-tank, and the mortar supports. And then at the back we have more T-64 tank battalion. We have one command and nine T-64s. Now you might notice that I've gone with less because I didn't quite have as I wasn't able to get my hands when I was building this lot up with a third battalion's worth of BTR-80 as a Soviet motor rifle, whether it be BMP or BTR or any or any other versions, is inferior full strength three battalions of infantry with a tank battalion. Then you flip that round uh, for the tank regiments, which so it would be three battalions of tanks with a BMP battalion normally attached. Uh, let me see what else have we got. So that is my two forces. Now the thing that I was pondering is because I have that T-80 battalion over there at the top, what I can do is take one of the BMP battalions, bolt that to them, and essentially if I had another T-80, which I do, I can pretend it's, I can basically, it don't, won't be on a circular base or it won't be on a command base for as a regiment. I don't quite have all the toys like these bolt-ons to go to the tank regiment. But essentially I could create a understrengthed tank battalion or tank regiment with a BMP battalion, T-80 battalion, and then have two. So essentially I will have potentially a complete-ish motor rifle division, which would be a, B a battalion, oh, sorry, a regiment in BMP, a regiment in BTR, and a regiment of tanks or i just take the tanks away from this lot and i do yeah the the advantage of having so much here is that i have 
I can change I can chop and change my units around as I need to. So if I want to run, or I should say, originally when I bought this, I wanted to just do purely a tank regiment and keep it at that, as it was equivalent to my father-in-law's American Armored Brigade, which is which essentially is the sort of Russian Russian to or Soviet Army to U.S. Army sort of setups we were running. This would have allowed me to run a dice tank heavy force but again it's Cold War Commander it's kind of the way it goes we didn't really do pointage we tended to follow more Orbats um, or at least variants of the Orbat so this would allow me to field as it, as it is here this allows me to field either a tank regiment and then have you know, infantry regiments without their also rifle regiments without their armoured elements but then they're all mixed and matched I can mix and match the battalions and the battalions with each other to make up combat groups depending on how um, doctrinal I want to be or anti-doctrinal I want to be and so on and so forth I might have to whether might just have to duck and dodge the commissars when they uh, he gets angry with me for not following the, the correct ways so on to the next toys so in the back we have the uh, BTR regiments Armor, um, I was going to say armored, armored up pioneers, but they're basically their engineer group. So this is three stands of infantry of pioneer group of pioneer engineers with their transports, and then a armored. So we have an armored vehicle. Sorry, an armored an armored engineer vehicle, an armored bridge layer, and a lorry bridge layer. With the BMP, we have the same again. Three stands of uh, three stands of engineer with their transports. Armoured Engineering Vehicle and the Armoured and Soft Skin Bridge Layers. Now in the back I am very light to be honest on artillery because the three guns, sorry the six guns in the front should be purely for one regiment. Divisional artillery being very large in this case so I should have two sets of these so I should have 12 of these guns but I do have enough 152s. And then just for the fun of it, I have a little extra unit in the, in the, in the form of a, a counter-battery radar unit. And then when I finally had enough of the Americans, I could basically just set fire to the entire table with my lovely little frog. This was a gift from my father-in-law because he wanted a few bits and bobs and he decided... And he, he got himself a, um, hang on, a lance. So he went, oh, if you've got a lance, I'll, I'll give you a frog so we can uh, nuke each other into oblivion. Because, you know, what's the Cold War gone hot without, you know, the threat of nuclear annihilation? And as someone once, I remember seeing someone once put it, is you've got two options of doing atomic warfare or nuclear weapons going off while playing a Cold War game. Because you can either basically uh, lay everything out, make sure it's all ready, and then just set fire to the table. Or you can do it in the command and control thing in that uh, your everything starts to go a bit awry further back because they're not str they're not using tactical nukes so they're using the strategical nukes so they're knocking out Moscow or they're knocking out Birmingham then they're taking out Paris and stuff like that so you're losing command and control elements rather than higher up. Now this little group over here are sort of a, a, an oddity. The BMP threes uh, something that I bought sort of by accident because I wasn't too sure what a BMP3 was. I didn't have access to the internet, so I couldn't get a picture of it. I didn't have any books with me, so I sort of just went, you know what, I'll just order some BMP3s and then see what I get. And I got these, which are BMP3s. With them are infantry stands. This is more of a... Uh, I suppose I would say this is more of my battle group style force. So essentially uh, a couple of platoons of T-80. These are GHQ models. And then infantry and BMP threes, which, if I remember correctly, are all from H&R, uh, Heroics and Ross. So a platoon leader, an SA-7 team, and then sort of for three eight-man rifle teams, each with an anti-tank weapon, so the RPG-7. And then a support group with a, I believe that is, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a um, what's it called, spigot and a Dushka on tripod mount with all with all kitted out with a, a BMP3 each they're a little bit more of a special sort of silly thing I had when I acquired uh, some of the figures they were done up as I suppose you could describe them as Spetsnaz or paratroopers as they're so I can get this so you can actually see it as these guys are in their 
yeah, they're, they're in more of the camouflage equipment. Whereas if I come across to the BTR battalion, you'll notice that it's green helmets and light brown for the infantry for your motor rifles. So it's sort of like a bit more of a specialist group. Now sat on this tray here, I'll just quickly show you, is a plethora of support weapons, grenade launchers, machine guns, recoilless rifles, some more variant SA, uh, I think it's the anti-tank weapons and stuff like that, and even more SA7s because yeah, H&R do big packs of figures. So one quick sweep round. So everything, well, 99.9% .9 of everything here has come from Herx and Ross. They have a very wide range of Cold War Gone Hot. If you want to say, uh, or mm -mm, modern. It's not really modern anymore because it's the 80s, uh, 70s and 80s, but it's, uh, you know, the, what I think most people generally refer to as the modern sort of style. 90, as I said, about 90% of the figures and vehicles have come from them. It is, if I remember correctly, literally things like these, my T80s here, and the T8 and the five, six T80s at the rear, who are all the GHQ figures. Again, the comment I'll make is that the GHQ stuff is a little bit more expensive than the H&R figures and vehicles, so I've tended to go with them rather than the uh, buying the expensive stuff because, yeah, I'd like to think that that's sort of the way it goes. Again, the good thing is with the Soviets is that you can use sort of, particularly in the case of armored, uh, armored, in the case of lorries and things like that, you can uh, believe some of these are my Zis Freeze that I did buy a load of for my Soviet tank brigade, circa 1943-44. So having things like Zills and Zisses, and then using them also with my with my uh, with my nineteen eighties communists rather than nineteen forties communists um, works. It's a lorry, they you know, it's a lorry that's 40, 50 years old, but it works. It's still being built. It's the same chassis, same work, maybe a little bit modernised inside. Then again, having been in the army and having been served in the British army and having been in Bedford's. Those things were those things were made in the eighties, and they still look like they were basically straight out the fifties, sixties. Anyway, what don't fix what's not broken. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So yeah, I am able to field. So if I go nuts and I, when myself and my father-in-law decide to run everything, we're able to run. I can run a complete BMP regiment, a more or less complete BTR regiment. And then have plenty of tanks to uh, throw in, throw at the uh, the Abrams and M60s that my opponent fields. Possibility for the future is that I'm I keep randomly look at building up a British Armoured Brigade. So this would be two regiments. This would be the heavy version of the Armoured Brigade. So probably two uh, two tank regiments, backed by an infantry battalion, and then possibly maybe getting a couple of extra infantry battalions just to sort of do the flip-flop around because again you have heavy and light again it's all armoured they were all, in the British Army we called them armoured brigades but it was usually two tank one or two infantry battalions they tended to and it would be the light version would be two infantry and a tank the heavy was two tank and one infantry go figure it's the British Army we like to do things our way well I shall leave you to it and I'm going to be honest, I'm finding these videos a lot easier to make than just battle reports. But there is one coming. I've just got to work it out and I've got an idea for a Portuguese, get Portuguese, French, British game and I'll be in the Napoleonic, so I've just got to get that one sorted out. So until next time.